uh, generally 20 feet high and 40 feet uh, across. The state-of-the-art destroyer based in Norfolk, Virginia, is equipped with missiles capable of attacking land, sea, and air targets. It's part of a class of warships known as the Arleigh Burke. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for the blast. For more on today's attack, we are joined by three experts. Larry Johnson was deputy director in the State Department's Office of Counterterrorism from 1989 to 1993. He's now a security consultant. George Wilson is a defense columnist for the National Journal and former defense reporter for the Washington Post. And Juliette Kayam was a member of the National Commission on Terrorism. She's now an associate at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. George Wilson, what can you tell us about how this happened? Well, it happened in a way which uh, would be very hard for the crew to detect. The uh, small boats are needed for this particular mooring operation to carry the lines from this uh, destroyer, which is longer than the football field, into the mooring buoys, which are posted around the perimeter of the ship. So there was no reason to suspect that one of these boats, which was assisting the operation and was carrying ropes, would be a terrorist uh, inside. So the men on board were actually helping tie the ship to the dock. The men in the little boat, right, were right. helping tie up the ship. So it looked just routine. And uh, suddenly this uh, small boat uh, either rammed or sidled up to the side of the ship and unleashed these explosives. So there was no indication that this was going to be anything but a normal docking. And it was not at a pier, which would have been easier. It was like at a floating a dolphin, they call it, uh, which is like a ramp uh, out in the harbor itself, not in a big pier. And they use that for refueling? Right. They were going to refuel, and they were, then they were going to go on and uh, patrol the Persian Gulf to see what contraband, if any, was getting into Iraq. You, you've covered the Pentagon for years. How would you gauge the U.S. response today? I think that, uh, that they told us what they knew. I, I think that they're still a little uh, confused as to who did it and how it was done, but I don't have any uh, sense of cover-up or any uh, feeling that they're not coming through with what they know. They certainly didn't hesitate, Larry Johnson, to say that this was terrorism or to intimate very strongly that this was terrorism. Um, what, what do you, from what you know of this, why would they lead to that conclusion? Well, th this marks an unfortunate new milestone in the field of international terrorism. It's the first boat bomb we've had since we've been recording data on it going back to 1968. Uh, because Osama bin Laden has been making threats about killing Americans, when you go back over the last seven years, he's the only one talking about killing Americans. Boats like this just don't blow up. It's not like someone was smoking a cigarette or cigar and lit off a bunch of jet fuel. So from this point forward, it's an investigation. We should not accuse and then uh, punish someone. We have to collect the evidence and, and determine who is responsible. And in that regard, the first step we're going to go over photographic imagery from satellites to find out to see where the position of that boat was, to see if they can track that. All kinds of signal intelligence. They're going to review, talk to people both that are on scene there as well as that may be in jails here in the United States who might have some connection that can tell them about what was going on. In addition, they're going to look for the forensic evidence. Unfortunately, about the bomb scene, the ev a lot of the debris is sunk or it's scattered in the water, but you do have residue on the ship. They'll be able to tell the type of explosive. They'll be able to tell the size of the explosive. Juliet Kayam, let's talk about what this whole idea of this being a terrorist target. Y this is Yemen. Is, was this a dangerous place for this boat to be, for this ship to be? Uh, is there, do we have reason to be worried about it? Were we on sufficient security alert? Uh, specifically with Yemen, I don't think that we had any reason to be particularly concerned. Uh, that it's in the Middle East and close to Saudi Arabia is, is relevant, however, uh, given what's going on with the Middle East conflict in the last two weeks. We do have to leave open the possibility it was not terrorism, um, but if it was, then two things flow from that. Is it specifically related to the events in the Middle East uh, in the last two weeks? Um, what do you think about that? Palestinian terrorist What do you group? think about that? Or is it a third option, which is a sort of distract and destroy. I mean, did a different, totally unrelated terrorist group know that we were so focused on the Middle East at this time that they sort of took it as an opportunity to uh, 
to go after us in an area that we were historically um, unsuspecting. So maybe it's not so much that when you say there's a connection to maybe what's going on in the Middle East, maybe it's just a question of our eyes were turned elsewhere and not that Palestinians in Yemen, say, were trying to right. strike out. Right. Pal there's, Yemen does not have a large Palestinian population, uh, and it's a very poor country. I think the most significant thing that should occur now uh, in the investigation is, is going to be the biggest question is going to be how much cooperation are we going to get from the Yemen government. As we learned with the Kobar Towers investigation, uh, we need cooperation from the hosting country and I think a lot of people in the government felt we didn't get that from Saudi Arabia. We're going to have to interview people in Yemen. I mean, clearly if this small ship, this small boat took off from Yemen, uh, people in port are going to know things and if we don't get full cooperation from the Yemenis government mm -hmm. uh, then it's going to hinder what we know and what we can find out and then presumably our prosecution. George let's back up for a minute tell me about this ship how is it that if as described two fellows come up in a boat they put some plastic explosives on their side or whatever they did blow themselves up and blow this huge hole in the side of a boat how can that be how does that happen are, are these ships not that strong well, the ship isn't as strong as a battleship. There's not a 16-inch steel in this uh, Arleigh Burke destroyer, but it is a half-inch thick uh, side of the ship. So uh, it was a very big explosion to penetrate uh, a hole that big. But it would be very uh, normal to suspect that a series of small boats were, were doing what they were hired to do, namely help dock the ship. So uh, it was a very cleverly planned operation. Uh, it was not something thought of last night. And uh, the next question is, well, how do we protect, protect the ships in the future? And unfortunately, I think it'll happen again because this is the era of asymmetrical warfare. Uh, I heard you ask <laughs> Secretary Cohen that very question today at the news briefing. What does that mean? Well, if I can't match you gun for gun or ship for ship, I'll find another way to find the chink in your armor. And attacking a ship uh, covertly like this, uh, you don't have to buy an aircraft carrier or a jet fighter. You can make your point uh, much cheaper and more dramatically now that the world is all wired up together. Go ahead. Well, I said, there's things those you can do to prevent this. And I mean, it's uncomfortable and it's an inconvenience for the crew, but I'd much rather have the crew inconvenienced than dead. You put out security patrols that inspect those ships. It's like going through a metal detector at the airport. No ship, no boat gets close to a U.S. ship unless it's been screened to determine no explosives on board, period. Is it an inconvenience for the crew? Yes. Is it going to tax the ships and crew? Yes. But I'd much, much rather have them tired and cr cranky than dead because they can go home tired and cranky and get happy. But when they're dead, they go home in a box. Juliet Kayan, we've come to expect claims of responsibility in, in cases like this. Should we expect that in this case? Actually, claims of responsibility have decreased in the last couple of years with terrorist incidents. So it, it may be that we will never um, know exactly who did this. I mean, certainly the intelligence, we're going to have to go back from this moment and determine what intelligence we had leading up to this point that could help us in the investigation. And this is going to tax American uh, um, agencies. Uh, we're going to have the FBI, the State Department, the CIA, a lot of folks over there at this stage. And uh, a lot of information will have to be shared to determine the best route or, or course for the uh, eventual pr uh, prosecution if it occurs. One of the things obviously we're hearing they're going to do is investigate. The other thing that both Secretary Cohen and Secretary Albright intimated today is that, and the President, is that we would strike back. Yes. I think Oops. if there was... Go ahead. I think we don't know yet um, if there was any state uh, that sponsored this terrorist incident. I don't think that uh, anyone has that information yet. Certainly if this was state sponsorship, uh, we would clearly be able to attack uh, that state. State sponsorship of terrorism has been decreasing, though, and, and if we sort of take away the last two weeks, uh, a lot of the Arab countries are getting out of the business, uh, especially with the new leadership in the, in the yeah. Arab countries. Uh, so this may be a rogue group, a group that it would be very difficult to uh, plan a targeted site. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard throughout the day everyone mentioning Osama bin Laden uh, as the sort of you know, inevitable uh, person that we go to. And, and, and uh, his movement right now, I would say, is probably severely restricted. Right. Uh, and we should probably, might start to think of, of different possibilities. Uh, George Wilson, what are the possibilities that are open for the United States government in terms of retaliation? Well, it's much easier said than done. Uh, our record in retaliate, retaliating has not been all that grand. We bombed what we said was a chemical uh, production plant, and it may well have been just a drug plant. So uh, the evidence will 
will have to uh, be gathered and it'll have to be very certain to, fi to find a linkage. But the problem with today's world is there's no nationality necessarily. It's like a bunch of wild snakes. And to locate which snake is sponsored by whom is really very difficult. And how long does it take to undertake the kind of investigation you're talking about or make the kind of changes, security changes you're talking about, Larry Johnson? Security changes can go into place tonight. It's very simple to put those security changes in place tonight. The investigation, they could go two or three years or longer without finding out who is responsible. In the case of Pan Am 103, uh, we, didn't, we didn't really get the break in that case until 1990, almost a year and a half after the event. Uh, in the case of Dahran, there's still uh, a lot of uh, suspicion about who was responsible, but no hard proof. So I, I think trying to retaliate without clear, convincing evidence is a stupid policy. Uh, we're better than that. We need to have clear evidence. And as George correctly noted, uh, the retaliation after the bombing of the U.S. embassies in, in East Africa in, in August of 1998, it may have mel made us feel better, but we hit the wrong targets. And if we're going to be a great country, we can't afford to do that. George, a final question. How off guard were we caught by this? How surprised did they all seem to be today at the Pentagon? Well, they were astonished, and it's a kind of a first. But uh, you cannot uh, do global operations on Navy ships without some risks. And uh, they will tighten security, but we're vulnerable. Uh, there's all kinds of things terrorists can do to a great power uh, in a covert way. So they were astonished it would happen. It, it, it happened, but uh, they were warning that uh, this is the new ball game and it could happen again. George Wilson, Larry Johnson, and Juliet Kayyem, thank you all very much. Thank you, Glenn. Thank, thank you. you. Again, the major stories of this Thursday, a U.S. Navy destroyer was attacked today in Yemen by an apparent suicide bomber. At least six American sailors were killed. And a Palestinian mob killed three Israeli soldiers. Israel struck back with helicopter attacks. We'll see you online and again here tomorrow evening with Shields and Jago, among others. I'm Gwen Eiffel. Thank you and good night.